Christmas shopping. What does that tell us about our society? It tells us the real God is mammon. The real God that people serve more than God is money, is materialism. And the Lord said you cannot serve both. What does Santa Claus teach us? It's a world that would rather focus on something we made than who God is. On someone who just sits there and gives us gifts and even or entertains us or even rather than encounter the presence of God. Christmas parties, what do they teach us? It shows how our culture uses the name of Messiah, but really it's into more than anything else gratification. Rudolph, what does he teach us? Oh, he does teach us something. Look at that. It went from Messiah to Santa Claus, from Santa Claus to his reindeer, from his reindeer to a reindeer named Rudolph, from Rudolph to his shiny nose. We went from Messiah to a nose. That's something important. You see how it just keeps going. We went from the major, we went off on a tangent and kept going off on a tangent of a tangent of a tangent. We lost Messiah and we ended up with a nose. Which is that the same thing that the culture has done is we've lost, it's turned from Messiah, and, it, and then nothing, then anything else, it's just, all, every, all life means nothing, it's just details of nothing. And the Christmas scenes, snow scenes, what does that tell us? Well, we've taken it out of context, we kind of put our own kind of, we rewrote the story. It's a culture that kind of rewrites stories in our image, whatever is politically correct or whatever, we'll make it into our thing. Instead of conforming to God, we'll conform God to us. Even something like that. And I'm not against the, those little bubbles. I like them. But the fact is, it's a, little, it's a little sign of something. Even hymns, even when the culture, our world sings hymns, it just goes through the motion of it. It's not like you say, fall on your knees. It's not like most people are falling on their knees when these celebrities are singing to Jesus. It's not like they're really living that. And so, so with our world, as we go through the motions, it's a, it's a, it's a society based on Judeo-Christian foundations. I don't care what anybody tells you. That's what this America was built on, and Western society was built on. And yet, we still have some of the things of it, but we are going through the motions of it. It's Christmas without Christ. Is, that's what the civilization... We have a Christmas without Christ civilization. Christmas is just the sign of it. Just the sign of it. And just as Christmas cheer makes no sense without having something to cheer about. So our morality and everything that was based on the Bible, when you remove the Lord from it, it starts making less and less sense. It becomes empty. Human rights make no sense without God and us being in His image. The sanctity of human life makes no sense. You take out God, then you take out babies, then you take out old people, then you take out the weak, then you take out that. That's what happens. When you move away from the foundation, you move away from, you lose everything in the end. Turn to Luke. Turn to Luke for the account. And this is called the X holiday. I heard this last night. I heard, I was, I, uh, heard the radio and. Uh, it's a Jewish woman who was reading this, who doesn't represent very godly things on the radio, and she was reading this, and she was so into it, I'm thinking, because she's working, because everybody else was off, but it was this Jewish woman who was like, and she's reading this, and she had such feeling for it. I thought, boy, you know, there's, there's a longing for something in this culture. Verse 1 of chapter 2. It came about in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that a census be taken of all the inhabited earth. This was the first census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all were proceeding to register for the census, every one to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David. In order to register along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was his child, came out in those days that they were there, the days were completed for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. And she wrapped him in cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And in the same region there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flocks by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them. The glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy which shall be for all the people. For today in the city of David there has been born for you a Savior who is Mashiach, Messiah, the Lord. 
And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. It came about when the angels had gone away from the, into heaven, the shepherds began saying to each other, Let's go straight to Bethlehem and see this thing that happened which the Lord has made known to us. And they came in a hurry and found their way to Miriam and Yosef and the baby as he lay in the manger. And when they seen this, they made known the statement which had been told them about the child, and all who heard it wondered at the things that were told them by the shepherd. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds went back glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as had been told them. This is what it is about. This is it. The presence of God. God's love, He comes down to earth. He comes into our lives. But there's a million ways to fight it off. But you see, everything I just said, that Christmas, the Christmas principle, that shows you how people can take a, ho a holiday and celebrate it without any meaning anymore, remove the meaning and go through the motions, it's amazing. So we do that too. Christian culture does it, we do it. There is always a tendency of us to move away from Jesus. Flesh, the flesh always moves away, from the centrality. You know, we look at how, how can the world... How can the world honor him once a year in lip service and then just do nothing? Well, we can do that too. We, we can honor him here and then just go on when we go home. It's one word and there's another indeed. Christmas sales, what does that teach us? What does that teach you? What does it warn you about? It warns you that you cannot serve God in money. You cannot serve God and materialism or you will lose God. It becomes dead. If you put that for you, put, you start getting into that materialism, you will lose God. It'll become dead. It'll become as dead as the world. You don't need to become more prosperous. You need more of the Lord. That's how you become truly prosperous. What does Santa Claus teach you? What does he warn you about? He warns you that it's easy to remake Jesus into our image to meet our wants. It's easy to fit this word into our life rather than to fit our life into this word. It's easy to accept what you want of Jesus and throw away the rest rather than conform your life to the real Jesus. I will, bro. I will. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, what does that teach you? Oh, it teaches you something. It teaches you how Christianity and all religion moves away from the center, most important thing, to the tangents. That mean nothing. That the one whom it's all about, it's so, there's a million ways to get away from Jesus, and Christianity has done it. And we can do it just as well in our life. Rituals, incense, statues, secondary doctrines, third doctrines, fourth doctrines, fifth doctrines, all these things arguing over things which are not number one. Focusing on Judging people over tongues or not tongues or, or, who's, or the color of the carpet or who's on the welcoming committee or who said hello to me or who didn't say hello to me or how comfortable the church is or the organization or ours is better than yours. That's all garbage. That's, that's the nose of a reindeer. That's not the Lord. We've exchanged the Lord for a nose.